o Masai Mara, o Isiolo, o Samburu, o Marsabit, where we have beautiful parks. But we know why he wants to privatize parks. Because he's holding brief for people who he wants the land to go to. It's not an innocent remark. It's a remark made on behalf of the bourgeoisie who want titles for our parks so that they own our national assets. We will not allow you. Shame on you. Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, in Tanzania, 60% of the revenue, and, and that is the reason, Senator Maruma, our colleagues are saying 5% is too low. In Tanzania, 60% of the revenue collected to parks goes back to the community. To either build hospitals, to build schools and fences around their parks, and provide water. And that's why, and with a lot of respect to Senator Ledama here, the Maasai on the other side of the Tanzania are doing very well. The businesses in Arusha are run by Maasai. Why? Because they have taken care of them with this 60% uh, revenue that they get to the communities. So, Senator Maruma, instead of proposing in, in the first clause about adequate funds, I can tell you it's not a question of adequate funds. Every year the National Assembly puts money in the Ministry of Tourism for paying compensation. This financial year alone is about 600 million. But because of incompetence of somebody who I will not mention again, that money is never paid out. So Senator Tangula asked a very fundamental question. A child who would have become a lawyer and engineer is killed by, trampled upon by an elephant. There's an elephant in Titoande we call Mwanzia. It comes out of the park every day at 5, 5 p.m. We call it Mwanzia. It walks around. It tramples upon a child who would have become an engineer and a lawyer. The law says that person should be paid 5 million. If that person had been hit by a car, yours, privately, they will be paid more because of the multiplier effect. So we should make it possible for Kenyans to go to court for, part, for compensation where animals have trampled upon you. Now, if you go to court, if you destroy somebody's crops and you go to court, there's a standard compensation, and, and, and not standard compensation, there's a standard interest rate from the date you filed suit. Now, in the case of Makueni, somebody's crops were destroyed in 2013, and there were 30 or 40,000 shillings, or 70. Now, you are paid in 2021 30,000 shillings. Who has lost? You. And that is the reason why, Senator Maruma, we are proposing that that avenue be opened. That is the only way for the ministry to learn that people ought to be compensated. I have files upon files of people who have been killed, people whose crops have been destroyed. In some cases in Makindu and places next to where you are, Senator Maruma, people see rain after two years. And immediately you cultivate, the elephants come and have a party in your shamba. And then you are compensated five years later. It's of no value. So I'm suggesting that this amendment be done. It makes it be mandatory, and if you don't get compensated, then you should have an avenue of going to get to get, uh, court so that we can enforce these judgments against KWS. That's really the point. Now, the government made, uh, uh, through the National Assembly, proposed what we call a county wildlife conservation committee uh, chaired by the county commissioner in every county. Now, it's never implemented. Why? Can you believe that in some cases they don't have sitting allowance? They can't sit because they, are, they don't have a sitting allowance and somebody is dead and they can't sit. In fact, Senator Waruma, why isn't it possible for this county wildlife conservation committees to go and have sittings where these incidences have happened? Why, for example, should a person who has been injured in Tito and Day on our side go to water for a hearing as opposed to this committee coming there? In your case, when somebody is in Taita Taveta on the other side, where you have those beautiful lodges, has to come all the way to county headquarters for a hearing. We should make it possible for these sittings to be held 
where uh, these incidences have happened. So I'm proposing that you have an amendment in clause, 20, clause 21 and clause 3, an amendment to section 23, section 24. Se Senator Wetangula had asked this question, and it's important I say this, and I wish Wambua was here. When it gets very hot in Kitui, they put water outside their doors. They do that because of snakes. Because snakes come into your home. In a place like Mtito and Kadekani, when you go to sleep, you have to check under the bed. Senator Wetangula, you have to check under the bed or on top. Because a snake, snake, snake could be possibly hiding there. So there's a reason why Senator Maruma has amended. Because the National Assembly then removed uh, snake bites from the schedule. Now, between Voi and Nairobi, Kenyatta National Hospital, there is no hospital that stocks an antidote for venom. So chances of you dying along Mombasa Road are very high because the government does not stock anti-venom. It's done by private hospitals. Yes. They have a child who ended up uh, losing her hand because she was poisoned. By the time she was brought to a hospital in Kilome Nursing Home, it had turned yellow and they had to amputate her. Because the government has no policy for buying antidote. If the government had a policy of buying antidote and uh, antivenom, then it would be not necessary to have snake bites as part of uh, this because you can be treated from a snake bite. So for, until, uh, for now, we must leave it there. Because I, I, I said the statistics are out of every five people in Makuene and Taita Taveta County, three, two are dying out of snake bites. Poisonous snakes that are hiding, in fact, in some cases, in their homes. There's something we call tourism levy. Other than even this, in addition to all these things, all the lodges in Taita Taveta County, which we visit, and, and Senator Maruma knows, charge 3% of that fund and transmit it to national government. Some of these funds, in fact, other than an insurance policy, I'm suggesting that you have a fund set aside for money collected by national government from our parks. So in the tourism levy fund, the 3% they co collect from, your, from Salt Lake, uh, Voy Lodge and others is transmitted to national government. The Finance Committee has suggested in a report tabled by Senator Kibiru that this fund should be collected by county governments. The same way we are saying if Banana and Co are tired of parks, give it to the national, to county government, let's see how we will manage them. Because I think we have the capacity to manage them. Similarly, it is also possible uh, to ensure that people are paid in less than 12 months. Because you cannot get into Masai Mara without paying. So why should you wait for 12 months? If, if a rogue lion jumps out of the gates and runs and injures somebody, why should you wait for 12 months? Yet there's a tourist who has flown possibly from Australia just to come and see the beautiful lions that are in Masai Mara. You should ask Senator Ladama how much it costs to sleep in a place called Angama that he loves. Thousand dollars a night. Is Angama and a <laughs> Or Kempinski. Or a place, uh, the place owned by, by this uh, Branson. Malim Zuri. A hundred and twenty thousand a night. Imagine how much national government is collecting and they are unable to compensate Kenyans for human wildlife conflict. In the case of, in the case of uh, uh, Taita Taveta and Makweni, we have asked them very simple things. If Shadrach Trust can have a, f a fence in Kibwez and in some parts of Makindu, how is it that national government has been unable to fence its parks to avoid elephants just running around? Now the people in, uh, in Laikipia have even built a corridor for their migration. You will see it not, not geo wild. The elephants have, been, have a corridor where they migrate, go to wherever they want to go, and come back at leisure. 
they still attack you, but you have created a corridor for them to migrate. Secured fence. They even raised money to do it. I don't know how, how far uh, Senator Lema is, is in doing the park, uh, the fence at Masai Mara. Maybe he will tell us. But it's the same thing. If he can go out there and get a fence around Masai, uh, Masai Mara, why can't we have national government do the same? So that we prevent the human wildlife conflict. And we can do so. Because we are making a lot of money from these parks. I don't know whether Senator Ledema knows. There are two white rhinos in Masai Mara. One is called um, Kofiana. The other one is called Queen Victoria. Now these two white rhinos are protected by six rangers. You know those, those good gentlemen. I went to the Masai Mara in 2015. I found them there. I went there last year. I found these people. Uh, Madam Speaker, and if you haven't gone to see these two white rhinos, you take a picture next to them. These people walk around with these rhinos day and night. Whether it's raining or not, they are with these two rhinos. And people pay a lot of money just to go and look for them in the bush because they don't live in a fenced, uh, uh, fenced area. This money ought to benefit the communities that live around the parks. And that is where the solution Tanzania has found to the human wildlife conflict. Involve the community. Plow in some of the money that you're making from the parks so that, in fact, the persons who guard this wildlife from getting into human settlements are the beneficiaries themselves. That is a secret. But because we get nothing out of the parks, nobody bothers. If you drive to, to Mombasa, you find that, in fact, at some point, along, somewhere along, around Voi, you will be stopped because the, sometimes the elephants just come to Mombasa Road to, to, to sit on the road. So until they move, <laughs> you cannot go anywhere. And if you are not careful, some of the elephants, the black ones that come from Amboseli, become very dangerous at night. So. Senator Maruma has a cause for the people of Taita Taveta who have been made poor by people who are making money from parks. Sometimes I feel sorry for Taita. It has the biggest mines. People are mining in Taita Taveta and nothing is being plowed into the community. The largest game parks are in Taita Taveta. Nothing is going to the community. The biggest size of plantations are in Taita Taveta. Nobody is benefiting. Taita Taveta should not be poor. And we support because we want the people of Taita Taveta to have the benefit. And the people of Mokweni and everywhere where there's a park, we must feel proud that we are hosting animals. There's nowhere in this constitution that says Kenya belongs to Kenyans and the wildlife. We are hosting the wildlife and they are not hosting us, both in Taita and Mokweni. And therefore, we should not pay the price for wildlife being amongst us. If a Kenyan is found in the park, just harvest, just collecting firewood, they are charged 200,000 shillings on the spot. Apart from the assault. I'm defending a young man, a Form 4, who was shot on his knees by KWS officers in uh, Savo last year. I'm, an inquiry, which I'm following. But when somebody is injured in the park or injured in their residences outside the park, it takes 10 years to compensate them. What sort of country treats its citizens like that? It's unfortunate. And therefore, I think we must tell Najib Balala, read the riot act to this cabinet secretary, that if he, if he can't perform, he had better resign. But this fellow who can't tell the bush from a tree, that's why he would rather do, say, let's privatize the park, instead of saying, let us compensate Kenyans and let us make our parks a little more better to get more tourists. I, I got a call from somebody who says, I want to visit the Masai Mara recently. Even in the middle of COVID, there are people who want to come to Kenya. And, we, and just like the president of uh, Tanzania said, Suluhu, about our wildebeests. It's an amazing concept. 
that animals can come to Kenya, get pregnant, and go back to Tanzania to deliver. These are sort of things. Serengeti is making a lot of money for Tanzania. It's because they have managed their parks properly and they have managed anything else that comes as collateral damage out of uh, the having animals, these wild animals that we love so much in those parks. I support these amendments with those corrections and amendments. Senator Maruma, we are going to support because this is possibly one uh, another way of making sure that we have better on source revenue for our counties that are hosting parks. Savo East and West is the largest national park in the country. Largest. And is entitled to Aveta, where Maruma comes from. And the people that host these animals are the poorest. It is a tragedy. I support. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Thank you Senator. Senator Mbogo George Ochilayako. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I want to support Senator Maruma's uh, amendment to the existing law. Madam Speaker, you have noticed that all the speakers are in support of this amendment and uh, they are in support of uh, improving the relationship between the animals and those affected by their being hosted in their counties. Madam Speaker, I think this is one piece of legislation, the primary one that we, uh, Senator Maruma seeks to amend that is uh, the one that uh, Karl Marx talked about, that certain pieces of legislation are put in place to exploit others. In fact, this is exploitation of poor Kenyans. Now, if you notice the rich world or the rich parts of the world, they don't even have wildlife, and they are the ones trying to tell us to keep them. They don't have it. In fact, somebody should find out why they don't have it and uh, they come to our uh, countries purporting that we will get money from keeping wildlife and that uh, from that money we live better. If you look at this piece of legislation, it was probably passed by majority of Kenyans. And majority of people tend to live in um, highly populated areas. They live somewhere in Central, in Nyanza, in Western Kenya, in Mombasa, and in other places. They don't live in Taitataveta, in Masai Mara, and these sparsely populated areas. If you look at Taitataveta County, you will find that the number of members of parliament are so few that they cannot make a dent when it comes to amending legislation. So this is a situation where majority members of the Senate and the National Assembly must take responsibility. We cannot use our majoritarian numbers, wherever we come from, to oppress few people and poor people. So we must actually look at this issue eyeball to eyeball and do what must be done. You see, when you are in Taita Taveta or you are in Masai Mara or in some other place, and you find an ordinary Maasai, an ordinary Taita, an ordinary Taveta, an ordinary Samburu, where we have all these uh, game reserves. When you look at them, they improve. In fact, their lives continue suffering. And then we put in legislation that uh, for us to pretend that we are keeping li wildlife, their lives do not matter. That these elephants, these wild animals must continue killing them. I also read the Bible and the Quran. I've never seen anywhere where it's decreed that you cannot kill an animal which is trying to kill you. If you kill this, you are jailed. If you are seeking compensation for having a relative or property destroyed or killed by it, you don't get it. If you are asking to be a partner in the profit uh, industry that uh, makes you keep it, you are not part of it. So where are you supposed to go? Recently, I was watching a movie uh, by the Maasai saying that um, um, if a lion kills their cow, they will kill it. I think if there is no compensation for this, the Maasai are right. They will kill these animals and you will do nothing. In fact, they will not, you will not even get a witness. When the state becomes oppressive, when society becomes oppressive, people go underground. They will not tell you who killed the lion. 
they will not tell you who killed the rhino. They will think that those things do not belong to them. So if we want to be responsible, let us first be responsible for the lives of our people, particularly the vulnerable ones who are poor and who are few. And we must do that by looking at the value of life. Let us not think that the uh, value of life of a poor person is, uh, has no value, that it has absolutely no value. In fact, if we look at uh, uh, where we started, all of us, who had anything? We were given opportunity by those who were protective of us. And we must provide the same opportunity to all Kenyans by adequately compensating Kenyans who are disadvantaged by our desire for profit and pretending that uh, uh, we are conserving the environment. Conserve Kenyans first. In fact, there is no environment to conserve if you cannot conserve Kenyans. When um, it comes to counties uh, like uh, uh, Taita, Taveta, Makwen, even my own county, uh, Migori, we have uh, certain animals that kill people. If you are found uh, with uh, the skin or a hide of a python, and it's not listed here, it's not even poisonous, but I can assure you it's extremely dangerous to everybody, adults and children alike, to disabled people, to women. It's not listed here. So there is a concept in law that um, if you are keeping anything fierce, anything that is capable of visiting destruction of people, then you keep it at your cost and your expense. And this nation must take responsibility for keeping fierce things that damage life, damage crops. So I think this bill is a good step uh, towards bringing that. I just want to encourage Senator Maruma to be bold. Be bold. In fact, uh, uh, Madam Speaker, I want to say that uh, uh, there is even an attempt to claim that uh, this is a money bill. Uh, some people may claim that. I don't think we should give a damn about that. Money or death, this is something that is going to correct uh, something that uh, is about death and about life and about coexistence. We cannot uh, dance around the corpses and poverty of people uh, when we count our population, we include them. When we share our resources, we exclude them. Those people can very well be us, those who may not be suffering uh, such uh, uh, atrocities like um, our uh, citizens from those parts uh, of Kenya. I want Madam Speaker uh, to say that uh, it is a shame to still have in legislation uh, the fact that an animal has a right to kill you and that you have no right to be compensated. Compensation is compensation if it is prompt and adequate. Otherwise, uh, those other things that are not prompt and adequate are not compensation. Mm. So we cannot purport to put some numbers that make no sense to somebody whose potential in life could be anything uh, from Isaac Newton to any other person. What makes other people think that Isaac Newton, before he traveled to that part of the world, was not from Taita Taveta? He may have been well from that place, and a future one may come from there, or a future one may be Maasai. So this kind of pieces of legislation uh, require a global approach. We must not have statutes that uh, are designed to uh, keep wildlife in a manner that does not protect and defend the lives of our people. The only thing you have uh, that you don't buy and nobody can sell to you is your life. So nobody should uh, come anywhere, including here, and uh, tell us that we must uh, keep wildlife um, if it is uh, killing everybody, and that if you are killed, uh, it cannot, you cannot get compensation. Assuming uh, some python uh, visited uh, the president when he goes to Migingo, what will you do to that python? So uh, is the life of the president more important than the life of my brother, Senator Kibiru? So absolutely not, because Senator Kibiru will be president soon in our lifetime. So if he is killed now, when will he be president? So Madam Speaker, 
I conclude by supporting this amendment, its spirit particularly uh, to the extent that uh, it is proposing uh, that we add uh, the amount of compensation given to people, that we expedite the timelines within which it is made available, and that uh, we increase uh, the net when it comes to the wildlife that are capable of causing harm to people, we must ensure that that happens. And that uh, for this nation to continue keeping wildlife, uh, the keeping of wildlife must be made beneficial to people who are most affected by their presence. That is a very good spirit. I conclude by saying that if that is not done, I will pray and others will pray that God deals with the animals. You might just find that they have died, so what will you do? It is important for us to do something that will save them, other than waiting for extraterrestrial intervention. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I support my colleague. Thank you, Senator Ochilo Ayako. Senator Anderitu John Kinyo. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. From onset, I want to say I support uh, this uh, bill by my, my colleague, Senator Maruma. And uh, Madam Speaker, the issue of uh, wildlife uh, human conflict has been there in Laikipia for a long duration of time. I can remember from the time I was in primary school, Honorable Gigi Karyuki, then the member of parliament, was talking about this issue of uh, animals attacking human beings as well as de destroying crops. And uh, Madam Speaker, if uh, you would allow me to give some, some of the statistics from Laikipia so that you can see the weight of this matter. I, I heard uh, Senator Mtula Kilonzo saying we have corridors in Laikipia. And uh, the way he insinuated is like in Laikipia we don't have these issues by issue of him talking about corridors. It is true we have corridors but we still have problems in Laikipia. Madam Speaker, I want to put very clearly, we are the bona fide owners of land of Laikipia. We are people with title deeds. It's not elephants, hyenas, or monkeys, Mr. Speaker, uh, Madam Speaker, who keep on uh, disturbing us. Uh, Madam Speaker, in Laikipia, we lose one to two persons every month from the attack of elephants and uh, hyena. And we experience crop destruction to a tune of millions of shillings. Madam Speaker, if you allow me, Madam Speaker, I can say verbatimly about some of the issues that we go through. Madam Speaker, in 2017, a marauding elephant attacked and injured Jerica, Jerica Nasusui in Karuaho village in Umruti, Umruti world. Uh, the same was reported to KWS, but there has been no feedback since 2017, Madam Speaker. On 5th February, 2019, a 12-year-old pupil, a 12-year-old pupil of Meredith Primary School was ma maraled by a hyena to bones at his home area in Ormaran, Nakipia County, as he was as he was dressing for for school, leaving her 71-year-old father and 56-year-old mother heavily wounded as they were trying to fight off the animal and save their son. Madam Speaker, on that September 2019. Reshadu Kinyani, a 16-year-old, was trampled by, by, to death by an elephant at his Karuru Kiruru village in Laikipia Sub County while on his way to school. The, the, the class 7 teacher was in a group of about 10 uh, classmates who was heading to school when a Lord Jumbo charged at them, killing him on the spot while others escaped with injuries. Madam Speaker, on 26 December 2019, a 36-year-old woman, Stella Chebi, was trampled to death by an elephant in Old Jabet in Laikipia, Madam Speaker, and she was uh, heading her animals. In June 2020, a hyena invaded and killed six goats at Kamau's home in Ndururu village in Gevega Ward. Madam Speaker, I'm just giving these statistics so that it can be known uh, what Maruma has brought to this house, it is, we are talking about people. It is not only statistics when we say about how many people have been killed. I'm mentioning names so that it can be on record. And we have reported this. So when uh, Senator Mtula Kilonzo, Senator 
Wetangula speak about the negligence from the minister. It is in it is in record. It is known, and he's supposed to pull his thoughts, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, on, Madam Speaker, on 16 February 2021, a three-year-old woman, Mary Debessa Lendonio, was strangled to death by elephant while collecting firewood in Humruti at about 10 a.m. while in company of others, other villagers who managed to escape. Madam Speaker, in a span of one month in February 2021, one marauding elephant trapped upon Hassan, a primary school student at Ndindeka Primary School in Gevega, and killed a neighbor identified as Gathogo. And there, and there was no effort by the KWS service to restrain the animal. Madam Speaker, on 2nd March 2021, the eve of Wildlife Conservation Day, a herd of elephant invaded Esther Wanjiko's farm in Rumuruti destroying several acres of maize in one night, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, on, on the same day, four elephants invaded Reshua and Kaga destroying fruits, orchards, and other farms. Madam Speaker, on 8th March 2021, a hyena killed three goats belonging to Mr. Kimamuroi and in neighboring village or Moran Road. Madam Speaker, Around Borosat and Mangu, hippos continue killing and, maim and maiming human beings and causing havoc in farms with little recourse from KWS. Madam Speaker, despite farmers reporting to KWS almost on a weekly basis, the response time from KWS remains a challenge since most attacks occur at night and, and most farmers lack direct access to KWS. Madam Speaker, it is not only like Kipia, the situation above revamps across the country. Since 2014 to 2017, 13,000 compensation claims have been lodged, Madam Speaker, and uh, 452 arising from, arising from human, human deaths, 455 from human injuries, 5,073 from crop damages, uh, 3,012 from livestock uh, predation and 33 for property destruction. Madam Speaker, none of those have been compensated. And I'm talking about they have been reported to the Ministerial Wildlife Conservation and Compensation Committee. And nothing has been done, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, it is uh, Senator Yatangula and Senator Mutula Kilonzo. I'm saying that because they are the lawyers. They will tell you, Madam Speaker, uh, Court law and common law on negligence, trespass and strict liabilities request that a person who keeps an animal that causes injury to the neighbors must be held liable. You have said it. So, so Madam Speaker, the people who own these animals in Laikipia are ranchers in Laikipia, Madam Speaker. And they allow these animals, they raise these animals to our farms, especially when there is drought. Madam Speaker, when the, there is a fire, they release this animal to our farms. Madam Speaker, we get trouble with these animals, but we don't get compensation. So what I want to encourage my colleague, Senator Maruma, this uh, bill is timely, and all what we need to do is to tighten the issue of compensation. Gigi Karioki had talked about it here in this Senate. He talked in the National Assembly until uh, his days came to an end, and the Lord rest his soul in internal peace. But they have, the people he was talking on their behalf have not been compensated. Madam Speaker, this is the issue that we must uh, talk and we must uh, not only talk about it, but we must take action so that people can be compensated. In Laikipia, we are suffering from all angles. If it's not animal, Madam Speaker, at night we are being attacked by bandits. Madam Speaker, if it's not bandit, Madam Speaker, I don't know where, where the rockers is supposed to be classified under this bill, Mr. S Madam Speaker, because uh, even rockers, even rockers, I think is... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Madam Speaker, I saw, uh, uh, and uh, from from the, the last the last page, Madam Speaker, of of this uh, of the bill in the schedule, I saw some of the animals that are the animals that are. Uh, I saw some animals, Ma Madam Speaker. I saw in, when what if species in respect to which compensation may be paid, where, whether there is death or injury, they said of elephant, lion, leopard, rhino, hyena. Crocodile, cheetah, buffalo, poisonous snakes, hippo, shark, um, stonefish. Madam Speaker, we get destruction even from monkeys.
there is a uh, whole stingray, wild dogs, wild pigs. But Africa, and when we, when, when we talk about the so okay, the soil beast. So, Madam Speaker, from where I sit, this is a timely uh, bill, and what we should do is to tighten and to shorten the time of compensating, and even the amount that people are supposed to compensate. Madam Speaker, if we attack, if you attack uh, an animal in any part of this country, you'll see like about three choppers landing of KWS that uh, the animal has been attacked. Madam Speaker, but if a Kenyan is killed, not even one, even like five, nobody bothers, Madam Speaker. And when we talk about voting, it is these Kenyans who vote. It is not these lions, it's not these hyenas that vote. But Madam Speaker, I think after voting, our powers are over and we are left at the hand of these animals to kill us, to destroy our crops, and the best we can get is just a story. There'll be compensation. Somebody comes to a shamba, he looks at we are told the first person to come has to come from Ministry of Agriculture. When the Ministry of Agriculture comes, he tells us he does not have capacity. Then from there we need to talk to somebody in KWS. Madam Speaker, there must be coordination, proper coordination so that we can know. If we talk to the person in agriculture, the person in the KWS, how long am I going to wait so that I get compensation, Madam Speaker? Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Anderitu. Senator Olekina Ledamo. Madam Speaker, thank you. I rise to support this uh, timely bill. Uh, the amendment to an existing act which is a Wildlife Conservation and Management Amendment Bill 2020 by my good friend, Senator from Taita Taveta. Madam Speaker, this is a matter which is very personal to me because when I was growing up in Narok, my father, who was a farmer, um, filed a lot of complaints in the Kenya w KWS, launched so many complaints when his crops were decimated by buffaloes you know, elephants, and until today, I was a young boy in school, primary school, but until today when I'm the Senator of the Republic of Kenya, representing the good people of Narok, where most of the wild animals live, he has never been compensated. I was hoping that my good friend would actually bring this amendment and really also consider the people who have never been compensated. And I don't know whether it can be retrospective, but I think it is important to be able to understand what is the cause of all this. Madam Speaker, we human beings are the cause of all these problems. And as we seek to be compensated, we also must take responsibility. During the big debate on the BBI, some of us saw an opportunity to try and bring in certain proposals on how we can be able to minimize this human-wildlife conflict. Madam Speaker, worldwide, people have discussed this, and we are borrowing when we are discussing this issue on the BBI. If you look at uh, the International Journal of Science and Research, you will see a lot of research which has been carried out on how we can solve this problem of human-wildlife conflict. You know, we have encroached into the land which was predominantly occupied by wildlife. But we have also continued to benefit immensely by the tourism activities of tourists when they come and visit this country. We benefit a lot from the Masai Mara Game Reserve, from the Savo National Park, when you go all the way to Samburu. But the problem is that we, and also the, the executive, has never been really eager to ensure that they protect you know, the population. Madam Speaker, the actions by the Ministry of Tourism have continued to impoverish populations because of ignoring, you know, the plight of people whose crops are destroyed. And you know, this human conflict does not only revolve in the matter where a human being is attacked by an, an animal. Property is also considered part of the human conflict. And I'm happy that uh, it is being referred to in this bill. You know, crops, 
And sometimes, one of the things that really baffled me when I saw this, and I would like to request my good friend to reconsider it, is on the time of compensation. Because hypothetically, if I'm walking, maybe I'm taking care of my cows, as most people, farmers, and also, you know, pastoralists would do in areas where there are wildlife, there are two dangers there. One, Madam Speaker, if you look at the wildlife, they carry very dangerous viruses which once they come in contact with, you know, our domestic animals, they cause a lot of problems like the East Coast fever and even other diseases. In our, in our, in our culture, we call them ingati because you cannot get a solution to them. The buffalo is the same, as well. And these are grazing uh, wild, uh, you know, wild animals. So, Madam Speaker, I would hope that uh, my good friend would consider reducing the time further amending his proposed amendment to actually immediately, because hypothetically, if I'm the one who is taking care of my cows and I mean they become disabled, does that mean that my family will stay hungry for 12 months for them to be compensated? These are things that we have to really be serious about. Madam Speaker, I want to support the sentiment of my two good colleagues, Senator Wetangula and Senator Mutula Kilonzo when they talk about the issue of management of this reserve. I don't know why Savo should be a national government entity. I don't know why Amboseli should be a national government entity. In fact, this Senate can do the best job now if we are not able to bring it into the BBI or any other form of constitutional amendment to revert back those national parks to the county governments. The people of Kajiado would benefit immensely if they have back Amboseli. Makwani will get a share of it, you know. But when you, when you try to reason with a current occupier of that seat of Cabinet Secretary of Tourism, the only thing that goes into his head is privatization of the parks, you know, coming up with regulations on how to manage, to some point even venturing into issues that is not even does not have the mandate to do that. Like I remember when he was raising hell over the issue of regulations in Narok County. In Narok County, the Masai Mara Game Reserve belonged to the people of Narok. They are the ones who donated. I strongly believe that even Savo National Park belonged to the people of Taita Taveta, Makweni, Amboseli belonged to the people of Kajiado and Makweni. All those counties. And I think that is the amendment that we ought to be bringing here to ensure that during this time when we are all fighting, to increase onsos revenue from the counties, we will consider those as part of the onsos. My good friend, Senator Maruma, saying that a small percentage should go back from the national government to the county government is not going to be the solution. I think what we ought to be pushing now is how to take back these you know, national assets or county assets back to the counties. Madam Speaker, in Narok, we are lucky we've got 19% um, of the money which is collected in Narok County that is put to support the communities to deal with this issue of the compensation. And, uh, you know, that 19% is not enough. You know? Now, when you talk about a small percentage, about 5% of the national uh, revenue collected from Savo to go back to the communities, if 19% is not enough, what, what about 5%? I think the argument we should be having on the floor of this house is that how do we revert back the management of these national assets back to the people? Madam Speaker, one of the things that really annoys me is that, you know, we are hungry to get land. We, we encroach all the way into the parks. But when we bring in an argument and say, let us put a buffer zone. You know, like in the instance of Masai Mara, for instance. There's no reason as to why we should not have a 10 kilometer radius, which is a migration corridor, so that we can limit this human life, wildlife conflict. Instead of the ministry thinking about that and trying to create public participation on that, he's talking about privatization. How are we gonna help that? Madam Speaker, if you look at the, the journal, International Journal of Science and Research, dating back to 2014, 
when they carried out a survey on how to resolve this issue of human wildlife conflict, most people said, if you cannot create a wildlife conflict, if you're not willing to implement and compensate people, put an electric fence. Fence all those wild animals, let them stay in the park and we stay in our area. That was never done. That was about 60% of the people. Now, it is about time that we become, you know, very serious on this issue of human wildlife conflict. We should not only prioritize the issue of compensating wildlife and not compensating human beings. Madam Speaker, I'm ashamed uh, sometimes because if you go to Kajiado, if you go to Narok, and maybe even Taita Taveta and Samburu, you will find that there are people who come from abroad, from the UK, from the Netherlands, from the US, they come up and form some uh, sort of like compensation committee where they raise money from their countries so that when a human being is attacked by a lion, instead of us Masai going to kill that lion, you are told you'll be given five million. What is five million? I've seen the figure of five million here also, saying that if a human being is killed, uh, you give him five million as compensation. Will really five million be able to compensate a life? Someone who you've been, you know, lucky to have, but just because of negligence, that person is taken away. So, Madam Speaker, I hope that my good friend will consider adding the following amendments. Number one, creating a wildlife corridor, which is, a, 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 you know, a, a radius of about 10 kilometers, so that from the gate you have 10 kilometers. Let me tell you, Madam Speaker, what is happening in Narok today. People, even some of us members in this house, and even others who are big cabinet secretaries, you know, other politicians, they've all gone to Narok to purchase land. They buy land next to the park. And when they buy land, that land next to the park, Madam Speaker, do you know what they do? They put an electric fence. And they go all the way to the river, Mara River. So when a wildebeest is trying to cross because he doesn't want to graze in a place where there's high grass and is going to the place which has been destroyed by you know, domestic animals, it is hit by the electric fence and it dies. Madam Speaker, if you traverse the county of Naro, if you go by air, you know you will be shocked you know, by carcasses of dead animals, most of them killed by an electric fence. So if you really want to have this electric fence, why do you have to go buy land all the way to the park? You know, I think certain regulations should come in place that no one should be allowed to build any house next to the park. You know, earlier on I had uh, my good friend Senator from Nandi talking about uh, a gentleman who built a camp in the migration corridor. In fact, the fact is, what happened then is that this gentleman who had constructed a park, constructed in a place which was further from, uh, where the, you know, the crossing happens. But because of the degradation of our land, when it rained, when we were able to safeguard the Mao forest, all of a sudden there was a lot of water. So what happened is that the place which had been destroyed, there was more water. Why, those animals could not cross there. So they managed to move up. I think what we need to do now, because that person was always in the right place, I think we need to look at all activities, human activities. Because the more we destroy the park, the more we destroy wild animals. And the more people will be attacked by these wild animals when they are looking for a place to run to. So these human activities must also be taken into consideration as a way to safeguard these domestic and wildlife animals that we all depend on. Finally, Madam Speaker, on this issue of compensation, I just want to reiterate as follow. That I think uh, Senator Maruma should really consider limiting the period from 12 months to immediately. You know, that can be able to help. And then number two, why not test the waters? Why not test the waters? Why not bring in a further amendment calling for several national park and Amboseli National Park to go back to the county governments. And we carry out public participation as we are required in all pieces of legislation. You will find that on that particular time, and I'm sure Senator Mutula will tell you, in most cases in this parliament when we carry out public participation, you'll find that only one citizen appear. 
that time there will be over three, maybe five thousand people coming. Twenty percent of them will be saying no because they have a vested interest. But the eighty percent will say we also want to be able to to get this because what will happen is that now more people, local people, will get employed. But currently, what is happening, Madam Speaker? If you go to Kajiado County, and if you go to um, uh, Savo National Park around that Taita Taveta, people will tell you in Kitu Yaserikali Bana, Atuna Ajane. Because even the people who work there are not residents from that area. They are not locals. They are people who are imported from other parts of the country to come and man an asset for the national government. And Madam Speaker, one thing which is actually even upsetting the most is that even though that is an asset for the national government, it is only a few, it is a cabal that benefits from the proceeds, from the money which is generated from those national parks. It is not everyone. Madam Speaker, I would dare KWS to publish their audited financial statements. Let them tell us how much they generated last year from, from the revenue of uh, people entering those parks. Let us tell, we want them to tell us how much of that money went back into the community. We want them to tell us, you know, what, is, what, what are their plans in terms of ensuring that they minimize this human wildlife conflict. So, Madam Speaker, as I <coughs> wind up, because I see my time is up, this attack on humans, attack on livestock, crop raiding, and property damage, I would beseech my colleague to put a figure on each one of them. Or also on this time, time, because if your property is damaged, where are you going to sleep? You're going to wait for 12 years? You'll be sleeping outside? You know? If your crops are damaged and you expect to be able to feed on them, will you continue just languishing in poverty, yet you did everything humanly possible to elevate yourself from uh, that, uh, uh, you know, impoverishment? So, Madam Speaker, I fully support this uh, amendment, and I do hope that during the committee stage, we, and I hope that uh, Senator Moruma will be welcoming for us to bring in amendments to test the waters. Because it's about time that we limit the role of the Cabinet Secretary Balala to being just uh, another cabinet without a portfolio. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, we now call upon the mover to, to reply. Senator Maruma. Yeah, thank you, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity um, to thank all the members for contributing uh, towards this amendment bill. Um, we've had a, quite a good discussion uh, surrounding this amendment from uh, the first day uh, to this day, and I would like to thank all those who uh, participated. Uh, we've had very robust discussions, and really... Um, Madam Speaker, I want to say that um, what is happening in, in our counties is not good at all. Uh, we are cohabiting with wild animals and we are not getting the benefits um, from these wild animals. Most of what we are getting really is suffering, suffering from wild animals as a result of human wildlife conflict. So 
I would like to um, thank um, all this input, especially from uh, senators, uh, Senator Lidam was the last person, who said that um, we should even be bolder to propose an amendment to have all uh, the national parks go to big game reserves. I think I've taken that in stride and I will look at possibilities of putting that uh, in this amendment. Madam, Madam Speaker, uh, Mr. Speaker, I would like also to thank the proposal that um, uh, the compensation uh, should be immediate instead of uh, the one year that we proposed in that uh, 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 amendment. Although it's clear that um, it might take time, uh, uh, Senator Ledama, uh, to maybe budget and uh, do the budgeting and put the enough uh, money in, in, in place since our budgets are done uh, yearly. Uh, it's, it might take some time to put adequate funds for the compensation. But again, if we know the approximate amount of uh, um, um, claims each year we get from um, uh, the people who live around the conservation areas, still we can be able to uh, uh, postulate and see uh, uh, um, approximate and see how much is required for, for the compensation. Thank you, Senator Ochiloyako, Senator Mtula Kulonzo Jr., uh, Senator Wetangula, for the discussions that, um, and the input uh, that has gone into um, enriching uh, this bill. Uh, uh, we are saying that, uh, and the most important one that I've picked is that we should be able to have people going to court uh, to seek um, uh, uh, orders from the court so that uh, payment can be done uh, in good time. Um, I may not be able to mention all those who contributed to this bill, but what I will do, Mr. Speaker, is that um, I will sit down and look at all the propositions that have been uh, put um, forward when we are discussing this bill, and uh, we shall uh, have our next stage, and uh, I know we will be able to enrich this bill, uh, particularly um, the areas of right to go to court, insurance scheme, activating the insurance scheme that has been uh, uh, discussed very loudly uh, by Senator Wetangula and Senator um, Tula Kilonzo uh, Jr. And uh, I know the county wildlife compensation committees are not functioning very well because uh, as it has been uh, uh, observed, sometimes they don't have sitting allowances uh, to to sit and determine how much our people are supposed to get in uh, compensation. So I think we need to see how we can rectify that uh, when we go to the next stage. Um, Madam Speaker, with uh, these few uh, uh, remarks, uh, Madam, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I would like to request that pursuant to Standing Order 61.3, a request that um, we put, we, we prolong, we put on hold, we defer the question, we defer the question at a later date, given that um, we don't have quorum. Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator Naruma. Uh, putting of questions that are deferred to tomorrow afternoon. Next order. Order number 10, the county allocation of revenue bill, Senate bills at number 30 of 2021, second reading. Thank you, Madam uh, Mr. Speaker. I left when it was a uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that the following motion that uh, the county allocation bill of revenue bill, uh, county allocation.